This video takes a look at Module 2, Lesson 2, using the number line to model the addition of integers. Um, down here, you see uh, the vocab term integers, if you need a recap on what that is. Um, opposite numbers and additive inverses. Um, this is from a lot of yesterday's lesson, or Lesson 1 in Module 2. And you may need this information to help you a little bit reason through what we are going to be doing today. All right, so today you guys are going to model integer, integer addition on the number line by using horizontal air, arrows. I know I've got this uh, when you guys are able to use arrows on the number line to add integers. And our standard is 7NSA1, which is apply and extend previous understandings of addition and subtraction to add and subtract uh, rational numbers. Specifically, we're focusing on the addition part and the second part, which is representing the addition or subtraction on a horizontal number line today. Lesson two opens up with an exercise problem. So what I want you guys to do, read through part A and B, and you're gonna need this number line as well, and go through and try to answer this to the best of your ability. When you are done, you can come back uh, and check your work based on um, what I have done prior to moving forward. So let's break apart this word problem. So I see we received 10 bucks, all right, $10. That is a positive value. Now, spending $4 is a negative. Now, I'm sure some of you were thinking it's obviously just six, 10, and then you lost four. But the idea is to be able to model this situation using addition. It would be written as you start with 10, and then you would add a negative 4, which gets 6, okay? So you had 10, you had a negative 4 added to it, and you end up at 6. Now, if we're going to use a number line to represent this situation, you start at 10, or start at 0, excuse me, you go over 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, ten, and then we learned from the last video, you go where the last number left off, which is here, and we will go to the left four, because four is a negative, so one, two, three, four, and we end up right at six, which is the answer to our question, okay? All right, moving on. Example number one, modeling addition on the number line. So we're going to complete the following steps to find the sum of negative 2 and 3 by filling in the blanks. Um, model the equation using straight arrows called vectors. So these arrows we're going to be using today are called vectors on the number line. So we're going to place the tail of the arrow now, the next thing we're going to do is draw the arrow two units to the left of zero and stop at negative two. We're stopping at negative two uh, because the first number here is negative two. Now, the direction of the arrow should go to the left since you're counting down. The two is a negative. Now, you're going to start the next arrow at the end of the first arrow, which will be at negative two. Two, and we're going to practice all this. Now you're going to draw the second arrow three units to the right since you are counting up by negative two and you're going to end up stopping at one. And then final step, you're going to circle the number at which the second arrow ends. So the first step, we're going to have to kind of look back and forth here, but our first step is to place the tail arrow on zero. So I'm going to use my arrow tool. You're going to use your pencil. So I'm going to put the tail of the arrow right here at zero. Okay. Um, now, step number two says draw the arrow two units to the left of zero and stop at negative two. Right there. Okay. Those are the first two steps, A and B. Start your tail at zero. Draw your vector. Um, arrow two units to the left of zero and stop at negative two. Next step says draw the second arrow three units to the right 
since you are counting up by negative 2. And prior to that, it says I need to start the next arrow at the end of this arrow. So I'm going from here, and I'm going 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3, and I am stopping right here at 1. Meaning the answer to this equation, if I write it out, negative 2 plus 3 is going to equal 1. All right. Now, what I want you to do is try G and H on your own. Uh, you can use those steps on the previous page down here. Um, once you have done those two problems, come back and check the video before we go forward. So if we're looking at the expression 3 plus negative 2, uh, I would start my arrow at 0. I would go to the right 3, because the first integer is a positive 3. My second integer is a negative 2, so I'm picking up from where the first vector left off, and I am going 2, counting down to the left. And I end up still at 1. So this expression up here, 3 plus negative 2, is going to equal a positive 1. So what do I say about the sums of negative 2 plus 3 and 3 plus negative 2? Does order matter? Negative 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus negative 2 because they both equal 1. The order does not matter when adding numbers because addition is commutative. Okay, um, you've learned that previously, but that also applies to negative numbers. You can add in any order and get the same answer as long as the numbers you're adding are the same. Example number two is having us look at some absolute value. So question A, how does absolute value determine the arrow length for negative two used a number line provided to support your answer? Well, we know the absolute value of negative 2 equals 2, so the arrow is 2 units long. Now, the only thing we need to know now is the direction, and because negative 2 is a negative number, the arrow points to the left. So basically, if I went to draw this with my arrow, with my vector, we know it's going to be two units long because the absolute value of negative two is two. And we happen to go to the left because that two is a negative number. So why don't you go forward and answer parts B and C on your own and then check back uh, with the video once you've done so. So for B, the absolute value of 3 is 3, so that tells you your arrow is 3 units long, and because 3 is positive, the arrow points to the right. You see the number line supporting that reasoning by having an arrow that's 3 units long to the right. Now C, uh, how would absolute value help you represent negative 10 on a number line? The absolute value helps because it tells you how long the arrow is going to be when you start at 0, right? Now since the absolute value of negative 10 is 10, I know the arrow, uh, when I go to draw this vector onto my number line, it will be 10 units long. All right, so go ahead and, uh, go ahead and attempt exercise two, uh, questions A and B, and then come back and check the video so we can move forward into some more examples. So for exercise number two, uh, A should be negative two, B should be negative five. Um, you can see the two number line um, arrow diagrams that represent the addition uh, sentence and uh, with the answers circled. Example number three, we are going to find the sum of the integers represented in this diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is write an equation to express the sum, sum being the answer to an addition problem. Now the arrow I see closest to the number line and therefore what what we're starting with, and also the arrow where the tail end is beginning at zero is five. Then where five ends, I see that I have an arrow that is negative two. It's pointing to the left two units, and then I see on the top an arrow that is going 
right three units. And we end up at six when we're done, making six the sum of five, negative two, and three. Now, what three cards are represented in this model and how do we know? The cards are five, negative two, and three because the arrows show their lengths and direction. Okay, so it's not good enough just to show their lengths because you you don't know if the number is then positive or negative. Now, in what ways does this model differ from the ones we used in lesson one? So the previous lesson, in lesson one, movement of five units was shown with five separate hops. In this lesson, five units are shown as one movement as an arrow. Both represent the same total movement, okay? So in lesson one, we did the hops, right? So we would do five hops, then two, then three. Here we're just showing it in one movement um, as an arrow. Now, for D, can you make a connection between the sum of six and where the third arrow ended? The final position of the third arrow is six. This means that the sum is six, right? Wherever that final arrow ends up is your sum. And would it change the sum if we change the order? No, because addition is commutative. Order does not matter when adding. Okay, do not forget that. Now, would the diagram change? The diagram would change a little bit. Um, because the first arrow would start at zero and point left two units. The second arrow would start at that negative two and point right three units. The third and final arrow would start at 1 and 0.5 units to the right. The arrow would still end on 6, making the sum 6. Okay? So the order would change your diagram a little bit, but it's not changing the overall answer to the expression because we are still adding the same three numbers it's not going to change the answer, okay? Now, we're going to skip this part of the integer game, and we are going to move forward into the problem set. So go through, uh, answer these seven problem set questions. Just a reminder, before you start, you have a lesson summary up here. Arrows, we use those today to represent integers. Those arrows show length and direction. Uh, the arrows can also be called vectors. The length of an arrow on the number line is the absolute value. Um, adding several arrows is the same as combining integers, um, and the sum of several arrows is the final position. So wherever that last arrow ends up is your answer. So go through, answer these seven questions to the best of your ability. Uh, this is your chance to make sure that if I go back to our one of our opening slides here, this is a chance to make sure that you are able to use numbers, uh, use arrows on the number line to add integers. So once again, work through that. When you are done, come check the video, uh, and that will wrap up this lesson on adding integers. The answer to the first problem set question is two. Uh, your diagram should look like this as well. Um, answer to number two is six. Once again, down here is picture the diagram. You should have four different vectors because we have four different numbers here. Uh, for B, uh, B, there's more than one possible answer, but if we're trying to get back to zero, we need any combination of cards that sum to negative six because you're trying to get from six back to zero. So anything that sums to negative six, that additive inverse um, to get back to zero, I just happen to pick negative six. So that would take me um, one shot instead of having to do like negative four and negative two. Okay, but anything that summed to negative six would get you back to zero. Now for three, I chose a scale of 10. Now you didn't need to do 10,
but our answer is 90. So you should make sure that your scale is great enough to fit 90. Um, if you picked 1, it would have only got up to 10. That's a problem. Um, but if you picked 10, it went up to 100, which would account for 90. Okay. Uh, really, if you picked anything much lower than 10, um, uh, 9 would have worked, 10 worked, you could have went bigger. But make sure your scale is always appropriate for the situation. The answer is 90. 4 is 7, uh, 4A is 7, B is 16, C is 0, and D is 1. For number 5, I picked 3 as my point Z. Um, obviously your answer is going to vary depending on what you picked as point Z, but if you pick three here are what the answers I got, um, you can see, but obviously it just depends what you picked. You could have picked two, three, or four because you needed an integer between one and five and the only ones integers between one and five are, are two, three, and four. So you should have picked one of those numbers. All right, once again, six is a story problem, so your answer may look different, but I said Jill got on an elevator and went to the ninth floor. That accounts for this first positive nine arrow. She accidentally pressed down button and went back to the lobby, so that's back to where we started. She then pressed button for the fifth floor, positive five, and got off the elevator. Okay. Um, seven, do the arrows correctly represent this equation? If not, draw a correct model. No, the arrows are not correct, actually. Um, the tail end of our arrow, so the first arrow, 4, is drawn correctly. The negative 7, the tail end, should start at 4, not at 7. So the length is correct, but its starting point isn't correct. And then this arrow should is correctly positioned once this middle one is shifted to where it should be. The correct model is down here. So if you are able to answer these problems set questions correctly and you are able to model these additions, uh, equations, expressions, and solve them correctly using the arrows, you have successfully mastered this lesson.